Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at rolling in Foundry VTT and there are two main ways that you can roll dice in Foundry. The first way is by using a character sheet and doing something like a strength check or uh, coming over to the inventory and making an attack with a weapon and then you'll get this option over here in the chat window and you can do an attack and you'll get this uh, pop-up window that lets you add a situational bonus like a d4 bless or a d6 bardic inspiration die or something like that uh, and then you also can set the roll mode and there's four different roll modes so public roll all of these will go to the chat window it just determines uh, who is able to see it in the chat window so for a public roll everyone can see it for a private gm role only the person who rolled it and anyone with the gm permission group uh, will also be able to see it uh, a blind GM roll only goes to the GM, uh, even the person who rolled it isn't able to see it. And then there's also a self roll and a self roll, like the name suggests, is only visible to the person who rolled it. Uh, we're going to leave this as a public roll. And then we can also uh, control if it's by uh, with advantage or disadvantage or a normal roll. So we're going to go ahead and click normal just to get a roll. And with all of our rolls, we can always come into the uh, roll window and hit this to see what we rolled and we can see that we rolled a four on the d20 but uh, since we were making a dagger attack i believe it adds our dexterity which is a plus two uh, which is uh, what gets added to get us to six here and you can see it up here in the formula uh, now rolling from the character sheet is great because it will automate a whole lot of now let's take a look at what the basic syntax is for rolling dice uh, all, I'm going to do all of these with slash roll, but they work just as well with GM roll or blind roll or self roll. So slash roll, uh, the first number we have to put in is how many dice we want to roll. And we're going to say uh, one and then a D. And then you have to enter uh, how many sides the die has. So for a D20, we're just going to put in 20. So slash roll one D20 and ta -da, it pops up into the chat window. Uh, you can also do uh, all the other main type of dice. You can do a d6, you can do a d8, uh, you can do a d12, you can do all of them. Uh, and one of the cool things is that you can actually add them together. So if you want to do slash roll 1d20 plus 1d4, you can. And you can always click into the uh, chat bubble and get it to expand out to see that we rolled a 2 on the d20 and a 1 on the uh, d4. And one thing to note here is that the uh, 1 is red. It will always highlight red if it is the lowest value on the die uh, and highlight green if it is the highest value on the die. So that's an easy way uh, to keep an eye out for that uh, and for d20 or for nat 20s or anything like that. So let's close this up and go into uh, rolling with modifiers. The first modifier that we're gonna take a look at is uh, what enables advantage. We're gonna look at keep high, drop low, or keep low, and, or drop high. There are four different modifiers that you can put at the end of a roll uh, and that you can include in multiple different rolls uh, when you're uh, putting together dice formula. So let's say that we've done slash roll, 2d20 and we want to keep high because we're rolling at advantage we can do kh for keep high uh, and then we can click in and we can see that we rolled a nine it's crossed out because the higher number was an 18 and that's super useful so we have keep high which we did with kh uh, 2d20 Let's say that we wanted to do it a slightly different way, but still get the same result. That would be DL, that's for drop lowest. Uh, or if we were rolling at disadvantage, we could do drop highest, which is DH. Or we could do uh, keep lowest, which is KL. Uh, all four of these will kind of achieve the same thing in different directions. Uh, it just, however, it is easiest for you to think about it. Uh, so let's do keep lowest for a disadvantage roll click in and see that we rolled a 19 and a 10, so we're stuck with the 10. One other cool piece of functionality with the keep high, keep low, drop high, drop low functionality is that you can select uh, the number of dice from that formula that you want to drop. So let's do uh, something like you were doing character creation. So slash roll 
and let's say you're doing 4d6 and you're keeping the highest three. You can do kh3. We can pop this open, see that it's getting rid of this three here, uh, and we're keeping the four, three, and five. And you can do that with any number of dice. Uh, you can do the same thing with uh, drop low or drop high or anything like that. Uh, and that'll be a good way to uh, control additional dice. And this is something that you can chain into multiple different parts of your formula. So let's say you were rolling two d20 at advantage, and then you were also rolling two d4, and for whatever reason you were dropping the highest d4. So you could either do keep low or drop highest. Let's say uh, drop highest. And we can roll those and it will add everything together properly. We can see we've got a crossed out four because we were rolling at advantage. We have a crossed out three, though that's not super clear because it's the same number that we rolled afterwards uh, for a total of 13. And there are some other modifiers that we can use as well. Uh, so we're going to take a look at re-rolling when you get a certain value. Uh, and so there are creatures like the Lightfoot Halfling that can auto re-roll uh, natural ones once. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the re-rolling command. So we can still just do slash roll as normal, 1d20, and then we can add in an r at the end, which will mean re-roll and then the value uh, that we're re-rolling on. So we're going to do a re-roll on one. And fortunately, didn't, we didn't roll one. I'm going to send this through a whole bunch of times and we'll see if any of them happen to be a natural one. And it doesn't look like it so far, but might just have to take my word for it. I'll do it one more time. Oh, we got a natural 20. I wonder if that, oh no, it would have been great if that one had been a one before. Another two, so close. Uh, no. Okay, so I'm gonna make it slightly more obvious and a little bit more likely for us to roll poorly because you don't have to enter just a single value. You can talk about a range of numbers. So we're gonna do 1d20 r for re-roll and we're going to say if it is less than or equal to 10, we're gonna do a re-roll. So slash roll. <laughs> of course, it's higher. Let's send a couple of these through and see what we get. Two 11s in a row. So the first one we rolled was a 1. The second one we rolled was an 11. Then we rolled an 11. Then we rolled 6, but we got a 19 because we were uh, re-rolling underneath 10. And then we got a 19. Uh, you can do the same thing for greater than as well. You can also do it for just individual numbers. And you can also do it uh, as part of a formula. So if you wanted to do slash roll, 1d20 re-roll ones uh, and then add 1d4 or actually let's say 2d4 and keep the highest because you're rolling advantage on bless for some reason uh, we'll hit that we'll open up the chat window and we see oh we rolled two ones on that that sucks uh, and that's one important thing to keep in mind it will not continually re-roll uh, it will only re-roll once for uh, any value uh, that you've entered or range of values so we've got an 11, a 1, and a 1 for 12. Now another common thing that you might get to do is either roll based on the results of a number of d4 or d6 or something like that, uh, or you might get to roll based on whatever your uh, ability score modifier is. So a cleric rolling uh, a number of d6 equal to whatever their wisdom modifier is, is a good example. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can do something like that. Uh, and this is called a parenthetical uh, expression. Don't let this scary math speak get to you though. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is type slash roll as per usual. Then we're gonna do an open parentheses, an at sign, and we're going to do abilities.wiz.mod and then a, quotes a closed parentheses. Uh, so you can also do this with dex by changing wiz to dex, int, uh, cha for charisma, uh, str for strength, uh, yada, yada, yada. And so we'll do d6 for that. And the one thing to keep in mind is that you have uh, the token whose ability score you're adding uh, 
into the formula is already selected. Now, if you're a player, that shouldn't really be a problem unless you have access to control multiple different tokens, in which case just make sure that you're selecting the right one. If you're a DM and rolling for a bunch of NPCs or something like that, uh, keep focused on this. Make sure you've got the right person selected because it will go into their character sheet, grab uh, the, their modifier value, so a plus three for wisdom here, uh, and pull that in. So let's do a slash roll. We can click into the chat window to see what we roll. We can see that we've got a green six because we rolled the highest number on the die, a three and a two. So we got 11 points of healing or whatever. Uh, and you can also do this based on a number of dice. So let's say you wanted to do, uh, you wanted to pop up uh, backup minions or something, uh, one D4, uh, D let's say d4 again because if you <laughs> add four times four that'd be quite a lot uh popping in at once uh but if they're high level you know what they could handle it so let's do slash roll one d4 d4 and we can see we rolled a four and then so we rolled four d4 uh and we got one three three and one for a total of eight now the last piece we're going to take a look at is rolling through a dice pool so a dice pool is useful in a situation like uh, if you had a rogue who was past the 11th level and so they had access to reliable talent, which means that uh, any ability check they're making that they can add their proficiency bonus to, uh, they can't roll lower than a 10. So let's take a look at how we would put a formula like that together. So let's say slash roll uh, open curly bracket which is uh, just next to the P key uh, on your keyboard and we're going to do 1d20 and comma 10 and then close curly bracket so basically what this means is in between each comma is a uh, rolling formula so here we have 1d20 we could make this 1d20 plus 1d4 if we wanted to and this could be plus uh, 1d8 or something like that. Uh, and then at the end, we can just do our normal keep high or we could do drop low. And that would do the math in between each comma. So it would do 1d20 plus 1d4, and then it would do uh, 10 plus 1d8. And whichever one was higher, it would keep that one. But uh, to be accurate to the example, we're actually gonna cross this out, pull it back in and do slash roll, uh, curly bracket, 1d20, comma 10, close curly bracket, keep high. You can also do drop low if you wanted to. We'll hit that, we'll open it up, and it looks like re we rolled a three, and so it defaulted to the 10 because that's our keep high value. So let's take a look at taking that one step further, actually. So here's a good tip for you. If you are on the chat window and you have previously rolled things, you can hit up uh, on your uh, arrow keys to go through your previous rolls. Uh, and let's take a look at how we can change this to have more complex formulas. Let's just do 1d20 plus uh, 1d4 and then 10 plus... Uh, 1d8, and we can add in a whole nother uh, uh, rolling formula. And we'll say, uh, let's make this one 1d100 plus 1d12 for whatever reason. Uh, and we're going to leave keep highest, and we're going to see what the result is. We can open this up, uh, see that it looks like our D100 with the D12 came out with the largest number, kind of unshockingly. Um, so we got a 28 from that, and that's what we got uh, for a roll. But we can also uh, include other things in here. So let's actually simplify this back down to just what it was and include our players or our tokens um, ability score modifier and its proficiency. So just like in the... Uh, uh, parentheticals section we're going to open a parentheses we're going to do at abilities dot dex dot mod close parentheses plus again uh, plus parentheses at attributes dot proficiency which is how you do uh, your proficiency modifier and then we'll hit 
close on the parentheses, and we should be able to hit enter. I'm just making sure I didn't typo on this because I've typoed on it a dozen times before uh, this video. There we go. Okay, so we can see that uh, we rolled a d20. It was higher than 10, so it kept that value. It added the plus two for a dexterity modifier here, uh, and plus zero for proficiency because Dwarfy is level zero and does not actually have a proficiency modifier. And uh, you can get access to uh, the dex, cha, wisdom, int, uh, con, all that kind of stuff uh, that you'd expect to be able to. Um, and that's the basics for uh, the multiple different types of roles that you can do. And I want to give you a teeny tiny hint towards what might be uh, one of the next video ideas, which is I'm going to hit up on this grab this complex rolling pattern that I've got. I'm going to control X, come over to the hotbar where we originally dragged out our fireball uh, command in the encounter video, open it up. I'm going to title it uh, reliable talent. And uh, it's a, we have a script or chat. We're going to do chat because it's just a normal roll command. So I'm going to put in the slash roll, the 1d20, uh, 10 keep high, uh, add, dex and proficiency i'm going to hit save macro and now uh i could select any token on the map click here and then click reliable talent and it will make that exact uh roll formula for me which is really cool if you've got something that you're rolling really commonly or if you're a uh a halfling like i said earlier who re-rolls ones automatically you could have a macro uh for your d20 rolls uh if you're rolling with blast all the time or something like that make it a macro get easy access to it uh, so i'm looking at either doing macros or doing kind of a, a jump into a bunch of modules because i've covered almost all the basics i still want to make a video about how the playlist works because i think having music really adds uh, an awful lot to a game um so probably going to make a video about the playlist and then either macros or modules so let me know which one y'all want to see first i'm kind of leaning towards uh modules just because there's so many big changes that you can make to the game uh, but there are some super useful macros like one for automatically turning on a torch or for doing you know any number of things uh, so let me know what you want to see thank you all for watching i really appreciate it uh, and i'll see you in the cancel that goodbye i had one other thing that i wanted to show you if you come up to look at the foundry vtt website let me get that open and get it open over here. And we go to the knowledge base. There's one for dice in here somewhere. Yeah, rolling dice, there it is. Um, you can get access to all these commands, uh, more examples of different ways of rolling and a couple that I didn't cover because I think they get uh, a little bit too complex. Um, and uh, that should cover anything else that you need to know about DICE or give you a quick reference for anything in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.